Hello, uh, Dr. Russell Thorpe here from the Old Link Surgery in St Anne's. Um, I'm making a little film about cervical cytology screening, screening for, uh, to prevent cervical cancer, uh, because we've had a debate in um, Parliament about uh, following a petition to, re uh, to lower the uh, age at which screening commences below the present 25. Uh, following that debate, the um, uh, the outcome was that there was no change to the uh, screening age groups and my own view is that um, there is good evidence that that uh, is not the correct action and I wanted to make this film to give you my point of view and to discuss some of the reasons why the uh, age range for cervical cytology screening starts at 25 and uh, to give uh, the evidence that we have that this should be changed. Uh, to understand that, you need to understand about cervical cytology screening, what it's looking for, how it prevents cervical cancer, and to understand that uh, the whole ethos behind cervical cytology screening is to prevent cancer ever happening. Um, when you, if you look at the debate that happened as a result of the petition in the Houses of Parliament, you will see that uh, the uh, people um, contributing to the debate mentioned cervical cancer many times, and they mentioned the delayed presentation of cervical cancer, and this is a very important uh, area. It, it's. Uh, but very important that ladies know what the symptoms are of cervical cancer and do present as early as possible to enable um, investigation and early treatment but it's a completely different subject to cervical cytology screening and that is because it, the cervical cytology program if run to its full potential would mean that practically nobody would get cervical cancer in my opinion. Okay. There's also the uh, vaccination program for wart viruses and this is also very important and also this is a very powerful uh, tool against uh, cervical cancer and again if that program was run to its full potential it would vastly reduce the number of cervical cancers and uh, uh, therefore impact on the need for a cervical cytology screening program. Unfortunately not everybody gets the vaccination before they've uh, become sexually active and the vaccination is not 100% effective so we still do need the cervical cytology program. Now the original uh, age range uh, was below uh, the present one of 25 but following work by Professor Sassini that ra age range was increased to start at uh, 25 and the work that he did showed that cervical cancer was very rare below the age of 25 which thankfully it is. His um, paper and I'll post a link to that uh, is very complicated and it's difficult to follow and it does look at stage 1b cancers uh, ignoring stage 1a cancer and even ignoring um, ladies of a younger age group which he described as being at higher risk. Uh, the reason being is that um, most women will be exposed who are sexually active women will be exposed to wart virus and we know it's wart virus that causes the uh, cervical uh, changes that can eventually lead to uh, cancer and most women w bodies will kill that wart virus and they will become wart virus free and their cells will be normal and healthy again and Professor Sassini describes these people as false positives, i.e. people who have the wart virus who do develop changes but they are ultimately destined to become healthy again. And he said that if you interfere with these people you can damage them 
cause anxiety and also cause uh, increased expense for the health service. And the point is that if you know that that person will become healthy again, then it's true, you can leave them alone. But we don't know who will uh, rid their bodies of the virus and who won't. Most people will. Most people we can just watch, observe, look for the uh, stages of more severe abnormality, which I'm going to describe in a minute, and kill those stages and then nobody would ever get a cervical cancer. Um, as I say, I would suggest you look at the work that Professor Sassini did, the paper that he presented, look at why uh, that was used to justify the present age range starting at 25. I'm now going to describe what it is that we're actually looking for in the cervical cytology program and it is not cervical cancer. We're looking for cells that might become a cancer. Okay. And just to go right back to basics, our body is made up of little cells and you can consider it a bit like bull wrap. Lots of tiny little cells all joined together and when old ones die, new ones form or older ones, they divide to replace themselves and healthy ones replace them. Now the wart virus gets actually into the little bubbles of the bubble wrap, the little cells themselves and interferes with the uh, procedure of uh, replicating the cells. So you'll get a cell that actually has the wart virus in it. And when that divides, um, you get another abnormal cell. And that divides, you get another abnormal cell. And you can see that two becomes four and four becomes eight, eight becomes 16, and that's the start of a problem. But the body has defenses. And as Professor Sassini's work shows, you can the body will heal those cells or kill them and replace them with healthy cells so it can go both forwards and backwards and it's that process that he describes as a false positive finding of people with abnormal cells who would never have gone on to develop a problem okay so I'm going to show you a, a, a little sketch that I did uh, to demonstrate this uh, this process and let's see if we can show you this okay so imagine you have a river on one side of the river one bank you've got healthy cells on the other side of the river you've got cancer cells and the key point is this the healthy cells cannot jump the river they have to go over three stepping stones okay and these stepping stones are called mild, moderate and severe abnormality. They have other names, but they all mean the same thing. Uh, CIN 1, 2 and 3, uh, mild, moderate and severe dyscariosis. Um, but it's basically these three stepping stones. And the healthy cells can jump onto these stepping stones, but also jump back again. So you might get mild, you might get moderate, even severe, and it might be healed by the body killing the wart virus and this is all stimulated by wart virus okay now the whole idea of the cervical cytology screening program is that we're looking for this third stepping stone if we find the third stepping stone and kill it and we can even kill the second one then we know that the cells will never get across the river and you never have a cancer you never have cervical cancer okay but the problem is, is if you uh, see somebody with uh, moderate uh, abnormality and you try and kill it, you might damage the cervix, which then could uh, impact on uh, a future pregnancy. Um, but you don't have to kill the cells. You can watch them and observe the patient and look to see if they're developing a third stone. If you find the third stone, you kill it. All right, then there's no risk of producing um, an actual um, cervical cancer. And when you read the debate in the House of Parliament, 
about the lowering the age range and they're all talking about cervical cancer that is not the point the whole point of the cervical screening program is you never get across the river you never get a cancer as soon as you find the third stone you kill it and we don't have young mothers dying of cervical cancer it would probably mean some investments in colposcopy services which uh, is the uh, area of the NHS that monitors the cervix for these changes and we can kill these abnormal cells quite easily you can use heat from uh, uh, cautery you can use heat from lasers you can use um, cold from liquid nitrogen you know you don't need a major operation they're all on the surface um, and within a short period of time the lady's fully recovered healthy cells have replaced the abnormal ones and you're back to the bank there this process takes some years it doesn't happen overnight so you've got time and um, if you kill the third stone you never get a cervical cancer right so onto the warp virus vaccine um, this was introduced um, uh, in uh, 2008 so we're coming up to, we've had 10 years of this uh, it started at 12 age 12 and those girls uh, haven't hit the screening program yet uh, there was a catch-up so the ones that were done at age 18 they have been vaccinated originally the vaccine used was against two of the warp viruses and there are several that can cause this process not just two um, four years later they changed the vaccine they used to one that had four of the warp viruses in um, we in our practice we actually used the uh, vaccine with the four in to start with because we recognized that the two wasn't enough and uh, eventually the screen the vaccination program was changed to reflect that so the warp virus vaccination program is also very important to prevent uh, this process from ever happening okay so why do I think that the age range should change from 25 down to 20 and it is for this reason from this you can see that we are not trying to find cervical cancer when we do cervical smear tests we're trying to find these stepping stones we don't want anyone to get a cancer and it's very successful if we can find the third stone and kill it we will prevent anyone from getting a cancer almost not all of them but because some of them aren't through this process but most people it would prevent cervical cancer and if we now look at the actual figures for people who developed cervical cancer and this is data from Cancer Research UK here years 20, 2013 to 2015 and this is numbers of people with actual cancer so each one is a failure of the screening program we want to stop anyone from getting cervical cancer and this tallest peak here is age 25 to 30 so the cervical cytology program is to prevent anyone from developing a cervical cancer if you see this that the, the highest incidence is in this 25 to 30 age group we need to be screening people for the stepping stones here to stop them developing the cancers we don't want any cervical cancers these people here that are in the 20 to 24 age range these people will have presented often with late disease because they don't know they've got cervical cancer no one's checked them and they'll present with uh, abnormal bleeding typically after intercourse and they won't realize they've got a problem okay so these people are at incredible risk of severe disease that's not curable this graph really in my view is very powerful evidence that we should be starting the cervical cytology screening at age 20 to look for those stepping stones to make sure that people don't get actual cervical cancer and the fact that the greatest number is at age 25 to 30 tells us that we should be in there earlier i think this is compelling evidence it's um 
real life it's not research this is what is actually happening and um, quite frankly uh, we need to be addressing this uh, sooner rather than later um, as I said at the beginning, it's still important that people who have abnormal bleeding do present to the doctors and are properly checked out, but that's a completely separate debate. Cervical cytology, we're looking for precancerous cells. It should be done before this major peak of cancers. When you get cervical cancer, the treatment may well require uh, the removal of your womb and you're looking at young women who can't have children when you're looking at young mothers who are at risk of severe disease and that's why that petition was started because we had a young mother who died and it's not we've had several of these cases there will be an investment there will be uh, increased anxiety but if you know that we're not looking for cancer we're actually looking for the cells that might become a cancer and to prevent you ever getting cer cervical cancer you're far more likely to turn up for your smear test. Smear tests aren't the nicest of things. I am, I'm a, a, a man, obviously, and uh, I've been doing smear testing for 30 years. And you do your best to make it as uh, comfortable and as acceptable as possible to the, to the lady. Um, the key thing is the tester needs to put the uh, lady at uh, their ease, let them know that they're in charge of the process and that so that they can uh, be as relaxed as possible. Um, one tip you often find is people will turn up and uh, they have a loaded bowel. It'd be really helpful if uh, people could make sure that they've um, used the toilet before they come to the surgery for their or the clinic for their smear test. It, that does help. Um, there are other things you can do that you can experiment with yourself um, to make this far more acceptable but it is a potential life saver and we're not looking for cancer we don't want any cancers we want to look for the stepping stones in the river and kill the last stone and then we don't have any young mums dying of cervical cancer uh, as I say, I'll put up a link to the Professor Sassini paper, you can look at that yourself, and I'll put up a link to the debate in, in Parliament as a result of the recent petition. Um, you can read that and, uh, again, make your own uh, judgments. Um, we are going to have a campaign by the Be Let's Be Clear on Cancer um, uh, program uh, targeting cervical cancer. We do have a low pickup, uh, low uh, um, uh, rate. We need to be getting uh, up to eighty percent of women having their smear tests. And uh, uh, so I, I, I would recommend to everyone that you get your smear test. Get your friends, uh, encourage your friends to go and your family members to go. It is a lifesaver, and. Um, I hope that this little film will encourage you to do that um, and together we can do better in this uh, totally uh, avoidable, uh, potentially fatal disease. Thank you.